Hello and welcome back to another TLC Tutoring Company accounting lesson. Uh, we appreciate those of you who have seen our videos before for returning. Welcome back. And for those of you who are new, please be sure to subscribe. So today we are going to be going over partnership liquidation charts. Now, uh, typically uh, partnerships occasionally have to liquidate their company. Sometimes it can be because they're forming a new partnership or just because they're going out of bit business. But typically what happens in a partnership is um, the company sells off all of its assets and pays off all of its liabilities and any remaining cash is then distributed to the, uh, the current owners. So in this case, we have a partnership with three partners, Campbell, Hickey, and Patil who need to liquidate their partnership. Now they have cash of 10,000, non-cash assets, that is essentially things like accounts receivable, inventory, equipment, so on and so forth, for 16,000, and liabilities of $3,000. Now they also tell us that Campbell, Hickey, and Patil each have capital balances of 12,000, 2,000, and 9,000 respectively. And they also give us some additional information here that are going to that is going to help us fill out this liquidation chart below. Now, before we jump right into it, I just want to address this ratio here. They tell us at the, at the bottom of the information section that Campbell, Hickey, and Patil have a profit loss sharing ratio of three to two to one. Now, um, when we talk about profit and loss sharing ratios, this is saying how any um, income is going to be distributed, and it also tells us how any gains or losses will be distributed to the partners. So remember, we have our three partners, Campbell, Hickey, and Patil, who share a ratio of three to two to one. So in order to handle this, we need to keep in mind that this three to two to one is like parts. So essentially we have six parts here. And uh, there's a few different ways of dealing with ratios, but just a quick review. Um, one of the best ways that I've always kind of, uh, I don't know, um, put this into perspective into my own mind is to treat this like fractions. So Campbell is getting three of the six parts. So he has a fraction of three sixths, which would simplify to one half. Hickey has a fraction of two over six, which will simplify to one third. And Patil has a fraction of one sixth. So essentially, if there's any gains or losses, Campbell is going to get a half of that gain or loss. Hickey is going to be allocated one third of that gain or loss, and Patil is going to be allocated one sixth of that loss. And this will come into play once we start taking a look at our liquidation chart down here. All right, so now let's actually talk about the chart itself. You'll notice that we have our cash, our non-cash assets, our liabilities, and our capital sections, all which was provided up above. And you'll notice that I added in these pluses and this equal sign. And this is to reiterate the fact that our accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus capital, still must remain intact. So that accounting equation is never going to go away in accounting and everything always has to balance. And I'll try to demonstrate this as we go through the chart. So let's start with the balances prior to liquidation. According to up top, we had cash of 10,000. We had non-cash assets of 16,000 and we had liabilities of 3,000. Um, Campbell's capital was 12,000 while Hickey had capital of 2,000 and Patil had capital of $9,000. Now, if we added up all of our assets on the left-hand side of the equal sign, you'll see that our total is 26,000. And if we do the same thing on the right-hand side, 3,000 plus 12,000 plus 2,000 plus 9,000, we'll see that it again equals out to 26,000. So remember, with each line, this still has to equal. So um, let's move on to this next one, a sale of non-cash assets. So according to our problem, we have non-cash assets of 16,000. However, those non-cash assets were sold for only $4,000. So compare that 16,000 to the $4,000 we are going to be receiving. What do we have there, a gain or a loss? Well, we have a loss of $12,000. 
Remember, we had $16,000 worth of assets and we only got $4,000 for them. So that is a $12,000 loss. Now let's see how this would be depicted on our chart. Well, in this case, if we're selling non-cash assets, cash would end up going up by the amount of cash we received, which in this case is the $4,000. So cash goes up by $4,000. Now think about our non-cash assets. What exactly is happening to these non-cash assets? Are they going down by just $4,000? No, not at all. Remember, we are selling all of the non-cash assets, so our non-cash asset balance is actually going down by $16,000, the full amount. Now, let's compare these now. We received cash of $4,000, and now we decreased our non-cash assets by 16,000 since we sold them all. They're now going to have a balance of zero. So what's the difference here? There's that negative 12,000, that $12,000 loss. Now that $12,000 is going to be allocated according to the profit and loss sharing ratio up here. So essentially, Campbell is going to get one half of the 12,000 Hickey is going to get one third of the 12,000, and then Patil is going to get one sixth of the 12,000. So let's just go ahead and plug that in. Let's try, oh, not liabilities, let's go to Campbell. Campbell is going to be getting one half, and I'll put that into parentheses to make it more clear, one half of the $12,000. Now, one thing to remember is that $12,000 is a loss, so that is going to be negative. So in this case, one half of negative 12,000 is $6,000. So Campbell is going to be absorbing $6,000 of that loss because he shares three of the six parts in that ratio. Now let's do Hickey next. Now Hickey, he shares two of the six parts, so that's one third. So one third of that $12,000 loss has to be allocated to Hickey. So he is going to be absorbing $4,000 of that loss. And last, Patil. Patil has the one in the three to two to one ratio. So Patil is only going to be absorbing one sixth of that loss. Oop, one second times. So now that we've completed this, now we can check our sides to make sure that they're equaling out. Let's see, cash and non-cash assets, that equals out to negative 12,000, and 6,000 plus 4,000 plus 2,000, all of those negative, equals out to again negative 12,000. So we still equal. All right, now you'll notice that after each step that we complete, it's going to ask us to update our balances. So let's go through and update the balances in each column. So after selling those non-cash assets, we have $14,000 in cash. We have zero non-cash assets. We still have 3,000 in liabilities. Campbell's capital balance is now only $6,000. Hickey now has a $2,000 negative capital balance. I'm just going to Put that in red so we remember it for later. And Patil now has a $7,000 capital balance. Now, pay close attention to how Hickey's capital balance has dipped below zero. We will deal with that later. Just hold on to that. All right, our next step is to pay off our liabilities. Now, um, for this one, just go ahead and pay attention to each one and tell yourself, well, which of these will actually be affected once I pay off my liabilities? So we have 3,000 in liabilities, so when we pay them off, what will be happening to cash? Cash will be decreasing by the $3,000. Nothing will be happening to non-cash assets because it doesn't get affected. Since we're paying off liabilities, our liabilities will also be going down by 3,000. And there's no gain or losses, nothing to be allocated, nothing being received, so nothing else is affected. Now, do our assets equal our liabilities plus capital? Yes, negative 3,000 equals negative 3,000. You are good to go there. Now, since we just completed that step, let's go ahead and do those borders, one, or balances, once again. So we have now have cash of 11,000, non-cash assets are zero, liabilities are now zero, 
And then our capital balances simply have to get dragged down. I'm going to highlight that negative 2,000 again. All right, so now at this point, typically what we would see is that the remaining cash would be distributed to the partners. However, we have a little bit of an issue here, and that is that negative $2,000 that we see in Hickey's capital account. So in order to handle this, uh, there's usually two ways. Either the deficient partner will um, just basically uh, provide the missing cash in order to bring his capital balance to zero, or the other remaining partners, which in this case would be Campbell and Patil, will absorb the loss based on their remaining ratios, which would be three to one. However, in this case, they say that any deficient balances are paid by the deficient partner. So pay close attention in your problem to see which scenario yours has. So in this case, Hickey is going to pay back the $2,000 deficit. So in order to show this, we'll see that Hickey's capital balance is going up by 2,000 and also our cash will be going up by 2,000. Now those are the only areas that are going to be affected in this type of scenario. So we can go ahead and update our balances. So we have now have cash of 13,000, non-cash assets of zero, liabilities of zero, Campbell's new capital balance is still 6,000. Hickey's capital balance is now zero and Patil is 7,000. So now we can look at, take a look at these two sides and say, do we now have enough cash to pay off those capital balances? Why, well, yes, we do. So that brings us to our last step, distributing the cash. So the partnership's cash is going down by the full 13,000. Campbell is going to be receiving $13,000, sorry, $6,000 in cash, which will decrease that capital by 6,000 and Patil is going to get the remaining 7,000. So that gives us our final balances of zero, 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 and zero. And ultimately this is what you are going to want to see at the very end of a partnership liquidation chart. Essentially remember we're liquidating the partnership so we want everything to have a balance of zero by the very end. Other than that, that's really um, all there is to a partnership liquidation chart. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. In the meantime, uh, happy studying.